Okay. Um, thank you again uh, for coming. I just want to, I'll start with a land acknowledgement. Um, I'm uh, settling, well, a lot of us here, uh, a lot of the non-trivial trivia folks are here in Winnipeg. So we're settling the swindled lands of Treaty 1 territory, uh, the traditional lands of the Ashinaabe, Inihu, Oji Cree, Dene, and Dakota, and the birthplace of the uh, Métis Nation. Uh, do we have any other uh, lands that uh, people would like to acknowledge? I know uh, we got picked up by the Toronto Star, so we might have some people uh, from out east. Uh, but if uh, anyone else would like to acknowledge their territory, I'll give space for that. Thank you, Carrie. I, I see that hand. Mikellick. Mikellick. Um, I, I did research this morning and I'm living on Huron Wendat land. Oh. What's the colonized name for your city, Kelly? Whitby, Ontario. Whitby, oh, okay. So I'm just going to drop a link in the chat. If anybody um, does not know about the land they live on, I found a website a couple of weeks ago that helps you, uh, uses a map to, you can type your address in and find out about the land you live on. Hmm. Would you possibly be able to send that to me on Messenger too? Because I'm not, um, I'm just you bet. Zoom. I'm not doing the Zoom thing except with Michael. At the moment. You bet. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks for that, folks. Um, we're going to take uh, mo have a mono mono silence in honor of the 182 children that were most recently uncovered. So we'll just pause uh, for 18.2 seconds here. Thank you. All right, everyone ready? I'm ready. Okay. So here we go. When the indigenous nations first encountered the Europeans in the 1600s, they were generally welcoming, trading from a position of a, weakness, B, need, C, strength and prosperity, or D, inferiority. In, <laughs> how do you say that right, Gary? Inferiority. Thank you. How do we answer? Ah, good question, Kelly. So instead of clicking in the Zoom chat on the screen I've shared, you want to go to your web browser, um, go to crowd.live. Okay. And Thank enter you. the code. Yeah. Yeah. So just type the letter in. Um, you might be able to. Yeah. I, th I always click on the one that I think is right, but uh, oh, got it. It, it might let you do the letter. Did that work, Kelly? Can you type the letter? Oh, yeah, nice. Awesome. Was awesome. <laughs> That's a good trick. Hmm. Okay, I've got 12 answers. So I think there's some people off camera here. Um, is there anybody who's waiting to answer? If you just raise your hand or, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll keep looking, keep looking for sure. Um, once I know what the magic number is, then I don't know how many people are playing, so. And no rush, no rush at all. How's it going? Good morning.
Okay, we got 13 votes now. And we usually, at least to start, we usually let the full five minutes elapse, I think. So uh, okay. if you're still if you're still looking for the answer, keep looking and then we can uh, give everybody a chance to find it. Thank you, Carrie. I never liked time tests in school. I always kind of blanked out sometimes. I was like, ah! <laughs> I managed to survive somehow because I'm, you know, intelligent and everything, but <laughs> it's like, I don't really like time tests. Mm -hmm. I hear that. But I appreciate five minutes. Oh, no. You can't get into the answer, Valerie. We can fix that. Oh, so oh, I misread that. Uh, I misread that message, Valerie. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. So you're having trouble getting to crowd.live? It, it's not in on Zoom. You'll have to have another tab open or. Um... Um, are you talking to me, Mike and Barbara? No, I was talking to Natalie. I'm mixing up names. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> you need glasses. No. <laughs> yes, you do. I can, I can see it just fine. It says Black History Manitoba Celebration. I'm just trying, oh, okay. I'm trying to connect the name. <laughs> no, but you do need new glasses. Yes, you're right. I do need new glasses, yes. You look like a wee character. <laughs> okay, well, we got uh, 17 seconds left. So uh, keep, keep looking for that answer. If you answer now, you get three points. Yay, three points. Two points. <laughs> Count down. One point. <laughs> I'll take all the points I could get at 10 a.m. Okay. Carrie, what's the right answer? Uh, did I get the right answer? <laughs> oh, um, uh, it's a position of strength and prosperity. That, that is what I answered. So I was hoping I was correct. <laughs> That's right. All righty, congratulations, folks. Uh, it's like almost everybody got that right, which is, which is wonderful. OK, moving on. Next question. The British Crown used treaties to obtain legal title to the lands the Indigenous nations were A, in harmony with, uh, B, interconnected with, C, responsible to care for, or D, all of the above. And this might be a little hard to find in the article, but uh, if you get frustrated looking in the article, just go with your gut or get on the Google. So while people look for answers to the second question, I'll just talk a bit about the first question. So right at the start of the article in the 1600s, um, when I was prepping for this, I learned um, indigenous nations are generally welcoming when Europeans arrive in their territory. They trade with the strange newcomers from a position of strength and prosperity, having developed cultural, political, and ecological systems that have grown and flourished over the course of millennia. So, and I kind of did learn that in high school. I'm, I'm 52, so when I learned this in school, it was a long time ago. I think hopefully things have gotten a little bit better than then. But we we talked about this period where um, you know the, the settlers were welcomed and they helped, and the First Nations helped them um, survive, basically. You know, and then we learned about the fur trade, and uh, that's about it. <laughs> so.
Yeah, I know that when, um, I think we had talked about this, either one of the lost events or uh, on Twitter or something, but yeah, I know the, um, what what people learned about in school about, um, you know, about colonization, uh, probably generally wasn't even at that point called colonization. I graduated high school in 2009 mm -hmm. and, you know, it, there wasn't a word that I recall being used. I mean, we touched on, you know, settlers and residential schools, but very, very briefly. And, uh, you know, and certainly we know, we know that's not, uh, <laughs> that's not enough. True, yeah. I'm not asking to um, rush people, but I think everyone has answered. I just, oh, okay, hang on a second. Hang on. You're playing, that's excellent, okay. Yeah. Now I know the magic number, so I won't have to keep asking. <laughs> Here we go. Hang on, sorry. Do it. Am I running out of No, lots of time. Yeah, lots I, of time. I'm not finding the answer, so I'm, I'm guessing now. Yeah, it might not be hard to hard to find in the article, but if uh, you can't find it in the article, just to get on Google or just go with your gut. Yeah, I did that, so I'll go with my gut. Yeah. Have you? Not yet. I'm okay. going to. Then I will know. Yeah. I get a count of how many votes have come in, and there's people off camera, so I'm trying to get a gauge of how many people are playing. That's uh, that's why. It, Was a guess. Okay, so that's 11, 12. So we have 14 people playing. Good to know. Um, so the correct answer is all of the above, but uh, which means that if you clicked anything, you uh, you did get it right. You just don't get any points for that one. But uh, yeah, all of the above. So they were living in harmony with, or responsible to live in harmony with, uh, responsible to be interconnected with. You know, responsible to care for. So to have your land stripped from you when it's so such a part of you is something that I, I just cannot uh, relate to or appreciate the, the trauma that that would cause. Um, you just have to listen. And to okay, so um, moving on. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna count 11, 12, 14. Answers. Okay. Next question. The legitimacy of these treaties are undermined because they could not be understood by all parties. By they, I mean the treaties. Uh, they contain key foundational concepts which do not even exist in Indigenous culture. Pick one of these concepts A. Crown sovereignty. Uh, B. Seeding of Indigenous territory. Uh, C, territorial boundaries, or D, Canadian currency. So there's four answers there. Two of them are correct. It will only let you pick one, but if you pick one of the two, uh, you get full points. If you click now, you get 84 points, if it's right. And if you're in the article, there's a section in the 1800s that talks about the treaties. So you might uh, might find it there. I should have answered later. <laughs> Thanks for saying 1800s, no. Oh. It's very helpful. Thank you. Yeah, and if anyone learned anything interesting, um, unmute yourselves and tell us. We're, we're here to learn from each other, so. Ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. Uh,
Okay, all the votes are in. That's great. So before we move on to the next question, a couple of things I want to uh, talk about. I was so eager to get going. <laughs> um, I missed a couple of things. So uh, first of all, I um, just want to thank uh, the Black History Manitoba Celebration Committee for partnering up with us and sharing their Zoom account uh, with us. It's uh, much, much appreciated because uh, we were always stretched for time trying to get through this in 40 minutes. And if people, to get people logged in and stuff at the beginning is always, is always a challenge. So we really, 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 really appreciate uh, partnering up there and for sharing um, Andre with us too, you know, on our leadership team uh, gives us some perspective that, uh, that we need uh, to do this uh, properly. A uh, couple other things, um, forgot to mention the prize. So, um, oops, hold on a sec, here we are. Okay. Uh, so, Muliak Kukok uh, gave a blistering speech. If uh, you guys, did I pronounce that correctly, Carrie? We're um. You, I think you were close. Mimala yeah. Kakak, I think, is thank, is thank how I how I remembered learning it. But um, yeah. I, I mean, we're all all learning, all learning how to pronounce. But if somebody uh, else knows how to pronounce her name and confirm, we would love to uh, love to hear from you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so she gave a blistering speech because uh, she won't be. She decided she isn't going to be running um, next next time when her term is up. And if you haven't heard it, um, you know, get at me on uh, uh, Twitter or Facebook. I'm at uh, Mike underscore Young, or just Google for it uh, because it's something. It's ten minutes, so I won't play it here. But it's uh, she spoke so directly uh, to um, issues that uh, she tried to bring up and were ignored. So and you can buy a uh, copy of her speech if you make a hundred dollar donation to the NDP. You get a signed copy. So we bought one and uh, we'll be giving that to whoever, whoever wins. So good luck, good luck. Um, another thing I wanted to mention, um, uh, some friends of mine uh, are connected with uh, Vertical Adventures. Uh, if you're looking for something to do today and you happen to be in Winnipeg, uh, something to do with your family. I know a lot of people are torn up about uh, what to do what we can do on Canada Day. Uh, Vertical Adventures are giving all the all their profits to uh, it's kind of hard to read because I've got that in a window. I'm just going to change windows here uh, to the Indian Residential School Survivors Society. So th those are the groups that run that uh, that toll free you know hotline uh, if you're experiencing trauma from residential uh, schools if you're a survivor or if it's in your family or if um, you've been harmed by it indirectly and you can phone these people. Yeah, so they're, um, any money they earn today, uh, they're gonna be uh, helping to keep that thing going. Um, okay, well, thanks for your attention there. Um, there's also a march today. I don't have the details on it, but I, I know it happens uh, after this event. So we're not keeping you from that. I believe uh, we're marching down Main Street uh, towards the ledge. Um, My daughter wants to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, and Rhonda put uh, a link to the speech in the chat. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So make sure you click on that. Uh, it'll open in, the new, in a new tab. You don't have to watch it now, but it'll, it, at least it'll be there, so you can uh, so you can uh, get to it. All righty. Uh, let's check to see who's winning. Wonder who's winning. Let's find out who is winning. Okay, Devin Rob. Congratulations. Wow, look at all the old people we got playing. <laughs> this is so, so cool. Okay. More than a screenful. My goodness. All right. And the correct answers were A, Crown Sovereignty. Oh, it's not showing. Okay. Hold on a sec. My quiz master is... Uh, there we go. Camping. So. There we go. So the correct answers were uh, crown sovereignty and seeding of indigenous territory. There was no, uh, that just, those concepts didn't even exist in, in the culture. So it's kind of unfair to ask people to 
sign off on agreeing to that. Okay, uh, moving on. Next question. Excellent. Uh, it worked. Which of the following assimilation policies are contained in the Indian Act? A, designation of indigenous women who marry settlers as non-status Indians. Uh, B, the exclusion of indigenous women from their traditional leadership roles. Uh, C, processes for enfranch enfranchisement as Canadian citizens for people willing to give up their legal status of, as Indians, or D, all of the above. Okay, I'm seeing the votes coming in. This is exciting. Um, for those that are working off the article, there's a section about the Indian Act in the 1800s. Okay, there we go, all the votes are in. So the correct answer is A, all of the above. Um, if uh, the whole idea of a non-status Indian is uh, status, uh, status for an Indian who um, had, had to give up all the you know, privileges that uh, were, uh, came along with that. Uh, Indian, a lot of uh, nasty stuff associated with the Indian Act. So Oh, Mark scratched me, and I have good. Thank you. I couldn't say it louder. The correct answer is D, all of the above, not A, all of the above. Yeah. <laughs> Did anyone uh, learn anything there that uh, they wanted to share? Just unmute yourself and step up. Okay. And you can talk while people are Googling because we're going to start question five. Okay. Question five. When the Indian Act proved to be ineffective, what assimilation program was started in the late 1800s, early 1900s? A, the Strategic Land Decimation Program. B, the Forced Relocation Program. Uh, C, the Residential School Program. And D, the Traditional Language Criminalization Program. I'm seeing the votes coming in. All correct too. Way to go, way to go people. <laughs> Okay, we got all our 14 votes in. Yes, it was the uh, residential school program. So congratulations, everybody. Um, I found it quite uh, interesting that uh, 
you know, the Indi Indian Act didn't succeed in the simulation because of the resistance uh, to it. You know, that's uh, people, uh, when they wrote that, they thought this would uh, make it a tr make assimilation attractive because you, uh, you give up your status and then you get to vote, you get to do this, you get to do that, but it wasn't at all. You know, so then they, uh, the colonization was uh, kicked up uh, quite a few notches there all at the same time. Okay, I'm gonna see who's winning here. Uh, who is winning? Devin Rob, <laughs> way to go. You're still holding up the fort, but it's, uh, it's close. Yes, we got uh, three people. Uh, I wish I could see who was fourth and fifth and sixth. I think it's close. Now, if you're feeling, uh, oh, there we go. Yeah, we got, this is close. Uh, things change really, really quick at the end. I'll just give you a little heads up. There's something called the lightning round where you get you know, a whole bunch of extra points, but not much time. So if you waited for me to finish asking the question by the time you voted, uh, you're not doing the lightning round quick. You gotta, you gotta be quick in the lightning round and just go with your gut because uh, I tried to make the answer pretty pretty obvious. Okay, uh, moving on. Let me just turn off the leaderboard and make sure it's off. Yes, it is. Moving on to the next question. Question six. When the James Bay Hydro Project and Mackenzie Valley Pipeline were built on indigenous territories, which of these three nations were affected? Uh, the Dene, Inunit, Cree and Métis, uh, the Dene, Mi'kmaq, Sikissa, and Mohawk, uh, the Dene, Mi'kmaq, Mohawk, and Ojibwe, or the Cree, Inuit, Inuits, pardon me, uh, Sioux, and Mi'kmaq. There are four nations affected, and one of those four combinations is correct. Good luck, folks. Nine votes already, so I think uh, people are finding this one quick. quick which is excellent. Oh, I see Chad's put the, um, the link to the U of Alberta course uh, in the chat. That is, uh, that is very worthwhile. I, I took that with Barb. And I, and there's a lot of material there. I, yeah. yeah, thanks Chad. A lot of, lot of really good material in there. I, might have to go back and revisit it. I, I kind of read enough to pass the test, but uh, I could spend months, you know, digging into everything that, that that's offered in that course. It's very, uh, very worthwhile, and that it's offered that no charge was so uh, very generous. Is anyone else taking that course? So I did, it. Did, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. got a certificate, I paid the extra to get the certificate. Well, for 60 bucks, it's worth it. Okay, we got 15 votes. I've been, uh... so we're ready to move on to the next question. We have the count wrong. Hope I haven't uh, cut anyone off. Okay, next question. Question seven. What was the right answer? There was a wave of activism in the 70s and 80s, pushing back against colonialism in many areas. Name one of the victories. A, uh, Supreme Court acknowledgement of continuous, sorry, continued existence of Aboriginal title. Uh, B, uh, the James Bay Agreement. Uh, C, uh, the repeal of the Indian Act. Or D, section five of the, sorry, correction, section 35 of the newly created Canadian Constitution. So there are three correct answers here. Uh, if you pick one of the three, because it only lets you pick one, you get full points. And Barb asked a really good question. Uh, what was the right answer to the last question? Yeah. Apologies for that. I will try to find out. I can't go back a question and find out the question because that would change it for everybody. So let me just check my notes. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for asking that. So the right answer is uh, the Dene, uh, the Inuit, Inuit uh, the Cree, and the Métis. They were the uh, four nations that were affected by the two mega projects. One in uh, 
northern Quebec and one out west. Thanks, Bart. That was important. So three answers are correct, full points for picking one of the three, and one answer is incorrect. So three would be mentioned in the article, the incorrect one obviously wouldn't be mentioned in the article. Okay, all the votes are in. Uh, congratulations, folks. And no, the Indian Act was never repealed, so the other three are, are correct. The Indian Act is uh, still in effect uh, uh, to this day. So yeah, the Supreme Court acknowledged continued existence of Aboriginal title, which is a, a huge, uh, a huge thing. It's nice that it's been put before the courts, and it's a hard thing to for Canada to, to deal with because uh, there's a lot of implications uh, about that. Uh, James Bay Agreement um, and Section 35 was uh, included in the Constitution. Right. Moving on to the next question. <laughs> question eight. In 2007, indigenous representatives working internationally finally had the UN's General Assembly pass the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, UNDRIP. Which of the following countries were among the only four in the world who voted against this? So there are four countries in the world that voted against uh, against this resolution, and one of those countries is on this list. So, While people are looking, I should just mention that uh, Canada's uh, reversed their stance on this and they've uh, decided to ratify it or promise to. Uh, I don't know if it's actually been, that promise has been delivered yet. So, something to hope for. It's also interesting that 11 countries abstain from voting on this. Mm -hmm. They don't want to vote no, they just, yeah. they just don't. Exactly. <laughs> but they don't want to vote yes enough that they would uh, go on record as not voting at all. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, we got, we got all the votes. I should have checked the other screen. Okay, yeah, the correct answer is Canada. Uh, yay. yay. <laughs> that was easy. Uh, yeah, it's um. Let me just. Does anyone know have the other countries? Uh, uh, yeah, I have it pulled up. One sec. Yeah. Um, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and the United States. Yeah, a lot of there's a common thread there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see who is who is ahead here. Deb and Rob and the Croakers. Oh, this is close. Okay, because a lightning round is coming back, coming up. And Dre, oh boy, everybody is uh, in the running here. And Chad, sorry, I can't, uh, I, gotta, I gotta really, excuse my nose. <laughs> Chad, <laughs> I had a really pure to see the, see the list here. You need new glasses. Yeah, I do need new glasses. No, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna subject you guys to that anymore. <laughs> okay, so lightning round is coming up. Uh, go with your gut. I got a little Tampa Bay lightning thing going on. Um, 
which you'll see in a sec, but don't look at that until you've answered because uh, their points are gonna count down uh, super quick. Super quick, extra points, but no time. Okay, so here we go, lightning round. It's the final question. Everyone get ready. One, two, three, go. What prompted the Idle No More movement? A, I got my second COVID shot. B, it was sparked by Indigenous women activists who were opposed to Harper's Jobs and Growth Act. C, is Friday a day off too? I see the votes coming in, most are right, that's good. Uh, D, I hope I win a signed copy of that speech. Okay, we've got 14 votes, so uh, the correct answer is B. Yes, um, the idol No More Want movement was uh, sparked by Indigenous women activists. Um, and should mention um, the article's a little incorrect there. Uh, there were four um, Indigenous women, Indigenous women activists who, who sparked this. Thank you, Barb. Uh, Carrie, can you uh, correct uh, whoever wrote this article and yeah. highlight the fourth woman? Thank you. Yes. Uh, let's see. I made a note in my art article, and now I have to find it again. Um, My search is not working. I apologize. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, there it, we go. It, go ahead. Yep. Um, I, I don't know more was formed in November 2012 by four women from Saskatchewan, Jessica Gordon, Sy Sylvia McAdam, Sheila McLean, and Nina Wilson. All righty. Yeah, one, 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 <laughs> one, one position. Okay, well, congratulations, Deb and Rob. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, are they on camera? No, they're not, but uh, we'll give them all the claps. I'm not, there's Deb. Hey, congratulations, Deb. <laughs> congratulations. Where are you uh, tuning in from, Deb? Deb, you're muted. Yep, she knows. You're tuning in oh, from you. Oshawa, Ontario. Okay. Okay, awesome. Can you make sure you drop your uh, mailing address in the chat? For email? Uh, um, yeah, just a way to contact you. I've got a, a list of 20 email addresses, but I'm not, I want to make sure I get the right one that belongs to you. So just put it in the Zoom chat. Sure. Uh, to make sure I get your prize. And that, just so you know, I'm waiting on the government to ship the prize to me. So it might be a while. <laughs> uh, not to <laughs> worry. Thank you. Yeah, for I put it in order two weeks ago. So uh, congratulations, Deb. That's great. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for organizing today. Yeah, well, we do this um, we do this every three weeks or so. So this is uh, this is something we've been doing for about nine months, uh, yeah. learning uh, marginalized histories together in a fun way. So this is a special yeah. Canada Day event we threw together because uh, people are looking for a way to celebrate Canada Day. Canada Day, and lots of people have are looking for different ideas. So we thought this would be something that would interest some folks. You know that uh, yeah, nor we we do do this all the time. So. If you're on Eventbrite, just uh, just uh, keep us keep um, keep your ears out, and you'll hear about it. I'll just drop some links in the chat if you want to uh, connect with us. We've got a, a Facebook group, actually, uh, a social learning group that um, that you can take uh, part on in. Just uh, if you're on Facebook, um, join the group there and then you won't miss any events. Um, we're also pretty active on, on Twitter. Okay, excellent. I got your email address, Deb. So we'll make sure uh, we exchange some, exchange some contact info out, offline. Alrighty, that's great. Well, I'm gonna, um, send you guys all off with a blessing, but I'm going to keep the Zoom chat open if anyone wants to wants to hang for for a bit. Uh, so thanks uh, very very much. This was our most successful event ever, so I really appreciate uh, you know all, all your enthusiasm and uh, for sharing this with your friends. We've never sold one out before, so I was uh, pretty nervous actually that, to have this many people. But uh, thank you did great. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> I tried. Oh, one more thing. I'm going to click finish on the game, and that way you'll get all the you'll get more than the answers on the phone. You'll get uh, a list of what you got right and what you got wrong, and, and all that stuff up here.
for the keeners out here. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so that should be just refreshed on your on your phones there. Yeah, you're welcome, Adam. You're welcome. Uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. We're going to be uh, moving this to Saturdays, so we're not sure if it's going to be nighttime or daytime. We've got to work that out and figure out what works for works for everybody. But if you want to if you want to come back and you want to make sure it's not during your bedtime, join the Facebook group, and then you get to weigh in. But, uh, yeah, if, you, if you follow on if you follow on Twitter too, uh, get the get the notifications because sometimes there's uh, mini quizzes to prepare you. That's right. Don't be like Carrie. Don't don't mute us or else you miss <laughs> you miss the notifications. <laughs> I, I didn't I did I didn't mute anyone. <laughs> I have two accounts that I get notified for mm. the no name tweets because they're funny and non trivial trivia. So. Okay. Oh, that was fun. That was uh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you, Mike, for doing this. Yeah. And thanks for hanging around for the after party. So, did anyone want to share something they learned that was uh, special for them, or something that stood out? There aren't many here. So we can all go off mute if you want. I don't think. Uh, I'm going to stop. Okay.